In this lesson, I will talk about pediatric asthma and how to approach a wheezing child. Asthma is a clinical syndrome of chronic airway inflammation characterized by recurrent reversible airway obstruction. Asthma is the most common chronic disease of childhood and is a leading cause of childhood mor morbidity from chronic disease as measured by school absence, emergency department visits, and hospitalization. When we see the pathogenesis, airflow obstructing asthma is the result of numerous pathologic processes, including bronchoconstriction by airway muscle, obstruction of airflow by intraluminal mucosa, and inflammation and the remodeling of the airway wall. In the small airways, airflow is regulated by smooth muscle encircling the airway lumen. Hypersensitivity or susceptibility to a variety of provocative exposure or triggers can lead to airway inflammation, airway constriction, airway mucosal edema, basement membrane thickening, subepithelial collagen deposition, smooth muscle and mucous gland hypertrophy and mucous hypersecretion. All those things contribute to airflow obstruction asthma. When we see factors influencing the development and expression of asthma, a combination of environmental exposure and inherent, that means biologic and genetic susceptibility has been implicated. In the genetically susceptible host, immune response to a common airway exposure, such as upper airway viral infection, allergies, second hand tobacco exposure, and air pollutants can stimulate, prolong it, pathogenic inflammation and the aberrant repair of injured airways. This leads to lung dysfunction and airway remodeling to develop asthma. As we know, atopic disease runs in the family. Genes predispose to atopy. And asthma is more common in obese children and it is more common in females than males. The other risk factor for Asthma is environmental factors. Those environmental factors can be allergens, whether they can be indoor or outdoor. Infectious, especially viral or respiratory tract infection during young age. Specifically, children who have bronchiolites during young age are at high risk of having asthma later in life. Occupational sensitizers, tobacco smoke, which can be passive smoking or active smoking indoor or outdoor air pollution, hyperventilation from physical play or exercise, and the strong odors can trigger bronchoconstriction. 80% of all asthmatic patients have disease onset before 6 years of age. However, of all young children who experience recurrent wheezing, 70% of them outgrow it. When we see risk factors for persistent asthma in young children with recurrent wheeze, we classify those risk factors into major and minor. The major factors are parental asthma, eczema, and inhalant allergen sensitization. And the minor is allergic rhinitis, wheezing apart from colds, eosinophilia on peripheral blood more than 4%, and the food allergen sensitization. There are two types of childhood asthma based on different natural causes. The first one is recurrent wizards, and the second is chronic asthma. Recurrent wizards in early childhood primarily triggered by common respiratory viral infections, usually resolved during preschool or lower school years. Chronic asthma associated with allergy that persists into later childhood and often adulthood. However, children with asthma generally improve with age. Mainly, milder diseases are more likely to remit. Regarding clinical features, the main clinical features of asthma include recurrent wheeze, recurrent cough, recurrent breezelessness, activity induced cough, nocturnal cough or breezelessness, and the tightness of chest. The typical feature of asthma include a febrile episodes, personal atopy, family history of atopic disease, exercise or activity induced symptoms, history of triggers, seasonal exacerbation and the relief with bronchodilators. The most common symptoms that is seen asthmatic children include cough, 
followed by wheezing and the exercise induced wheeze of car. Overall, intermittent dry coughing and expiratory wheezing are the most common chronic symptoms of asthma. Respiratory symptoms are worse at night, especially with sleep. Daytime symptoms are linked with physical activity or play. Asthma develops by one year of age in 26% of asthmatic people. It develops by 51% at age 5 years and after 5 years, the chance of developing asthma is around 22.3% in overall asthmatic patients. 77% of asthma begins in children less than 5 years. When we see tools to diagnose, as all other medical problems, good street taking, careful physical examination and investigation, especially above five years by a spirometry are the most important thing to diagnose asthma in children. On history, we should have to ask the child whether the child had an attack or recurrent episodes of wheezing. Does the child have treble some cup, which is particularly worse at night or on exercise? Does the child cough or wheeze after physical activity or exercise or after excessive crying? Does the child experience breezelessness or breathing problems during a particular season? And any stream of self or family of atopic disease should be asked. On physical examination, we should have to check general attitude and the well being of the child, any chest deformity, character of breathing, sort of auscultation of breeze sounds and the signs of any other allergic disorder on the body and growth and developmental status should be checked. Uh, regarding investigation in asthmatic children, investigations that should be performed in asthmatic children is spirometry. This spirometry is possible for children more than six years of age. On spirometry, we see airflow limitation characterized by Forced expiratory volume 1 second to forced vital capacity ratio less than 0.8%. And also, we should have to check bronchodilator response after giving inhaled beta agonists. In this case, an increase in forced expiratory volume 1 second by more than 12% after inhalation of short acting beta agonist tells us the presence of airway hyperresponsiveness or asthma. And also, exercise challenge. In exercise challenge, worsening in forced expiratory volume in one second more than 50% tells us also there is uh, asthma. And also daily peak expiratory flow, day to day and AM to PM variation more than 20% is a sign of airway hyperresponsiveness. According to Global Initiation for Asthma, definition of asthma in under 5, we should have to have the following symptoms, which are highly suggested to diagnose asthma in less than five years, because we can't perform spirometry in children less than five years. From this, frequent episodes of this, more than one semence, activity-induced cough or this, nocturnal cough in parents without viral infection, absence of seasonal variation in this, and the symptoms that persist after registry goes for childhood asthma. A simple clinical index based on presence of a wheeze before the age of 3 plus, presence of one major risk factor, and the presence of two minor risk factors predict the presence of asthma in later childhood. A useful method for confirming the diagnosis of asthma in children 5 years and the younger is a trial of treatment with short acting bronchodilators and glucocorticoids. Lack of improvement with bronchodilator therapy is inconsistent with asthma and prompt consideration of asthma miscarrying conditions. Use of spirometry and the other measures recommended for older children, such as airway responsiveness and the markers of airway inflammation is difficult. When we see the differential diagnosis of a wheezing child, we should have to consider the age of the child when we think of the differential diagnosis when a child came to with wheeze. For less than six months, the most common cause for wheezing is bronchiolites, gastroesophageal reflex, and asthma is the rare cause of wheezing in less than six months. For six months to two years, the most common etiology for wheezing is bronchiolites and the foreign body aspiration. Asthma is the uncommon cause for wheezing. In two to five years, the most common cause for wheezing is asthma and the foreign body aspiration. 
On radiology, chest radiographs in children with asthma often appear to be normal, aside from subtle and then specific finding of hyperinflation. Chest radiograph can help identify abnormalities that are the hallmarks of asthma mimics and the complication during asthma exacerbation. When we treat asthma, always we should have to think of comorbid conditions if there is no appropriate or no response to our management as we expect. Those comorbid conditions include allergic rhinitis and gastroesophageal reflex. Allergic rhinitis is characterized by sneezing, mainly in the morning, blocked nose, itching sensation, snoring, and mouth breathing. And gastroesophageal reflex is an nocturnal cough followed by vomiting. This is all about the part one of childhood asthma. On the part two, we'll see about management of childhood asthma. Thank you for watching.